Hey guys, Merry Christmas. I hope you guys are having a wonderful Christmas. How are you guys doing? I hope everything is fine. Uh, this is my uh, minimalist tree. <laughs> this is how I like my Christmas tree to be. Uh, so today I'd like to talk about something. I received this message on my Instagram. My name is blah blah blah. Been watching your YouTube videos. Big up for that. I passed the first and second round of GKS 2022 and I'm waiting for placement. I selected SNU and SKKU. That's a Song Jung Guan. <laughs> really tough. Me. I have a few questions. I chose mechanical engineering. Like, is it hard studying engineering in Korea? How are the classes? So I thought it's a good opportunity for us to talk about studying engineering in Korea. And uh, yeah, I'm going to focus on a few things, six to be precise. And yeah, let's just jump right into them. Number one is the transition. So the transition from language school to engineering school. As some of you know, I did my language school at Kyungi University, that's around Huegi. But then after finishing my language school, I got to pick level five and went to do my engineering, my undergrad at Seoul National University. There is a stark difference between language school and engineering school. In language school, the classes are more interactive, the professors are fun, they're more personal. But then then when you go to engineering school it's it's like a wilderness like every man for himself sort of like it's a stark transition so for example in language school we had something called domis these are people who could like uh, they are Korean friends who could like guide you and help you to settle down but then in engineering school there is none of that like you have to figure out your way you have to be proactive in getting to know the courses and what you're supposed to take and all that stuff now that your mind is prepared for the transition let me talk about the course selection each class has a certain number of credits so it can be three credits or two credits or one credits and there's a total number of credits that you have to have in order for you to graduate so for example in SNE you need 132 credits for you to graduate you have uh, the courses that or subjects are divided into different categories you have subjects like subject for liberal education requisite subject for major elective subject for major so subject for liberal education for example physics biology psychology korean history those are subjects for liberal education and then you have requisite subjects for majors for example most engineering schools will require uh, mechanical engineers to take uh sorry mechanical engineering students to take mechanical drawing and uh, creative engineering design for their first year elective subjects for majors for example if you're taking aerospace engineering in in seoul national university you have to choose between control and aerodynamics you don't have to take uh, both of them for example, if my interest is more on lift and airplane wings, then you can take aerodynamics. If my interest is more on the control system, then you can take control. This thing is so confusing that you have different categories, you have a number of credits that you have to take from each category. And the most important thing is before you join engineering school, go to the department's office and ask them for a list of uh, credits and how many credits you're supposed to take from each category the third thing i want to talk about is past papers and the groupings in engineering for example most of my examples are going to be from snu mechanical and aerospace engineering we had around 150 students and the students will be grouped into like three three groups you have like a class we call them classes so a class and b class and c class the groups help the students to be closer and more interactive with each other and it's nice if you have friends from your group because what ends up is most of those groups you'll find people with past papers or already in some cases like literally like answers to some assignments if you're going to do an assignment and you want to confirm your answers make friends with people from your group and ask them if they have kichul munje those are like past papers when i joined engineering in a class i told you we are about 50 students and because korea is a developed country i was expecting almost half of my class to be females but still if you join engineering courses at least mechanical, aerospace, electrical, civil engineering, there is a really high male to female ratio. 
in a class which was my class we had like 50 students and only three of them were girls i'm, I'm only talking about this because the person who wrote this uh, message to me is a girl the fourth thing i'd like to talk about is the language so are you going to do most of your classes in english are you going to do them in korea in engineering most of the work that you're going to do will be maths you'll be calculating and doing a lot of mathematics at least in snu so the language is not that important but when it comes to liberal arts uh, classes some of them might not uh, have any english substitutions so in snu some classes for example you have calculus one you have an english class and a korean class but some of those courses don't have any english substitutions so most of the classes i took were actually in english even though i studied in korean even some classes which did not have english especially in engineering the professor will allow you to write your answers in english because the textbooks most of the textbooks which they use are in english you have textbooks which have been translated into korean this is funny i talk with my korean friends and they tell me it's easier for them to understand english textbooks than textbooks which have been translated into korean uh, even if you have a korean class you can request the professor to submit your assignments in english i know this is not the case in most universities but the silver lining is if you're going to do engineering most of the work you're going to do is going to be mathematics graduate school classes and internships uh, what most people don't know especially undergraduates is you can take graduate school courses and i usually encourage people especially uh, seniors to take at least one graduate school course because it's going to give you a good picture about your future so if after graduation do you want to go to graduate school or do you want to go into the labor market so you can take a few classes from graduate school and also you can request your professor to do an internship in the lab and you're going to have a good first-hand experience about how it feels working in a korean lab uh, the working hours and it's going to give you a general overview of how your life is going to be if you transition to graduate school i asked my professor if i could intern in his lab for i think one or two semesters and he said yes i wasn't really involved in the project in his lab because i wanted to learn about more about aerodynamics that's why i went into his lab so but then you have people who help write thesis and i even know a friend who like published a thesis while he was in his undergraduate working as an intern in the lab so number six and the last thing i'd like to talk about is clubs and organizations i think in america you say sorority or something sorority or something anyway i had two clubs and they served two totally different functions number one is i play field hockey so i joined the school uh, field hockey team i was really close actually i was closer to my uh, field hockey team than students from my major and then for my major i joined a club called polaris and in polaris you could make like a simple robotics project so i remember my project I was trying to make was really simple you're using a color sensor so you could like sense if an object is black white or red or blue and place it in a certain container because i wanted to think about if you've ever worked in a logistics company they normally get packages and for example packages which are going to sell they're going to be sorted in a certain place and packages which are going to busan are going to be sorted in a certain place so my idea was to have all packages be labeled by color so packages which are going to sell are going to be like for blue for example and you're just going to have a machine which is going to just you know sort the packages out based on color that was my the the bigger picture in my project it didn't work out <laughs> as i intended it to but it's good to be in a club and different clubs will serve different functions sports and interacting with students that was through the field hockey club and getting to know more about engineering and interacting with professors i used to do that in polaris there are resources which are going to help you learn you don't have to focus exclusively on what the professor is providing for you or the recommended textbooks you can go online in snu there was a creative lab so 
if you have a project you can go to the creative lab and they'll help you learn about fabrication about how you're going to proceed with the uh, with the project take advantage of these resources join a club and uh <laughs> have a merry christmas thanks a lot for you guys who subscribe to this channel it's nice for me to interact and share what i learned about korea so if you have any questions don't hesitate to ask me peace and merry christmas bye